We're here at UK Nights with Jacob, who got top 32. Congratulations. Woo, Take us through the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I played Voices Voice, I played Pure Voices Voice, I played seven hand traps and six of the side deck. So uh, this week we this weekend was interesting. So I played <laughs> uh, three Diviner, the Triass, and I played three Low, and I played three Sephira, and I played three Skull Guardian. And I played two Seravis, and I played an old man. I think this is all pretty standard. Um, yeah, these cards are all quite good. Um, this shares targets with cards in my side deck, which helps. So okay. um, we'll get onto that yep. in a sec. But yeah, those are voiceless voice cards. So I think they're pretty pretty easy to go through. So then I played three Fenrir, and I played a Magnum. Um, this is a siding issue. Basically, I ran out of space. And this card's quite good in the main deck. Uh, it hits IP in the Sekai matchup um, and finds you Sphera for turn. Um, I've had this add like Seravis quite a lot as well. Uh, that comes up because then you can like ritual the Seravis or just use its target in protection, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so this has been quite good. And then these, so uh, I'm on board breakers and this card yep. is way better when you're playing board breakers yep. um, because you know, like you dart rule of them, you special Fenrir and stuff and then you start clearing everything. Because this deck has a problem with clearing cards, um, and this can really help you like clear stuff. Also, going first, it's nice as an interrupt. Also, like the fact that it like adds a copy of itself. Very often, you like Sephira and you ritual with the copy that you've added, and that's really nice. Um, that came up all the time, like all day. Um, so yeah, big up Fenrir. Card was really good. Cash cards in general were really really good this weekend because everyone was playing like rogue decks. Um, so then I played three barrier and a blessing. This card's like crazy broken. Uh, very often, like you want to end on this and then do the thing with Seravis where you flip a Seravis and then just keep bouncing it. Um, okay. Then I played three pre prep and I played two prayers. Uh, the two prayers is pretty standard. Uh, three pre prep, basically, like I wanted my deck to just draw gas. Um, I think this deck has a problem with bricking sometimes, uh, particularly into hand traps. And just having more cards that like you kind of press the button and it like does something it's like really really important like finding uh Cerevis, uh for your low is like often very very important um sometimes like just finding the ritual spell means like so much right because it means that uh, when your sephira gets ashed um if they don't ash this right you can then go like the ritual spell put the ritual spell in grave and then your low can grab the trap and shuffle back the ritual spell and then you can like make ip boards and things like that um so yeah, like this card has been like pretty good for me like all day. Came up a lot under Shifter as well because yeah. you can't Sephira under Shifter, but you can like activate this, grab the Ritual spell, and normally under Shifter, if you get to like Ritual plus Low, you're probably doing okay. Yeah. Um, so then I played uh, Three Frost, um, which I think is just pretty standard. The card's very good. I don't really need an extra deck. Um, then I played uh, an Instant Fusion, two talents. Uh, three Dart Ruler, three Droplets, uh, and a Cosmic Cyclone. So I figure I'll talk about all of these at the same time. Uh, this card, I hardly ever resolved it. When I did resolve it, um, I sort of wasn't thinking about what I was doing. I did some really stupid things, like activating this and then looked down at a Fenrir in my hand and went, oops. Um, uh, it's quite good in theory. Like it, you know, like you summon like a Muckcracker or you summon a Millennium Eyes. Um, and then like negates sort of whatever hand traps, right? Or helps you like break a board if it's muck, like if it's mud dragon in particular, because uh, they can't like princess like your low and stuff. Um, so yeah, like this card is meant to be pretty good. I don't know. I never saw it. Uh, <laughs> so these cards, um, these cards are like crazy good in this deck. Um, very often, what I was like finding and testing is you could like hand trap Snake Eye a bunch, um, but like ultimately, I think the issue comes down to the fact that Diviner has 500 attack points and Low has 50 attack points and Snake Eye Ash has 800 attack points because mm. it means that you end up in these hand trap wars with them, right? Where you're both like not playing and stuff like that, but you can't actually kill their guy to like stop yeah, them from yeah. using the effect next turn. Um, so you end up basically just playing like less good Snake Eye. And like post side, you can get up to like a really high hand trap count in this deck. Um, I think I had a list that get to 18 plus Fenrir's post side. But again, you run into the same problem, right? You just throw hand traps at them and sometimes they just like break through. 
Uh, you don't really have that problem with these cards. Uh, you get to build like a lot more, like you get to play a lot more engine stuff, which is what you want to do in a ritual deck. Um, and this is just like invalidating, right? This is just invalidating on these boards. Um, so yeah, like these cards were like really, really good all weekend in all sorts of different matchups. Um, yeah, like I can't stress sort of highly enough how good these are in this deck. Um, and then two talents and a cosmic. So the cosmic is because again I ran out of space in my side deck, and uh, I wanted three of them. Uh, you need, <laughs> well, this is the UK, and. Uh, knowing my luck, I would play two Cosmic Cyclone and no Feather Duster, and I would play round one, two, and three, and they would be Runic Sun, Runic Sun, Flu. So, fair enough. The card was fine. Like, it did its job, what can I say? Also lost me top 32, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, then two talents, so this is like another breaker. Um, conflict with Frost sometimes when you need to draw, but normally that's fine. Um, in general, this card was like okay. It wasn't anything special. Did its job. Like, yeah, I can't really complain too much about talents. Like, yeah. the card's just like decent, you know. But like, if I was gonna like change stuff about my list, I would maybe look at like changing these, just because it was like hardly ever relevant. Like, if I was like cracking a board, I was like cracking the board whether I had talents or not. Um, and like going first, I the card's like okay, but I'm scared of other people siding into breakers as well, yeah. right? Because like a lot of the stake I lists now like want to take out hand traps going second. So that was a little like concerning at least on talents, right? But the card was fine. And then I played one radiance because you kind of have to. So that's a 42 card main deck. And then I'll do extra. So I played this one because it's good. I played these two because they're good. You have to play two. It comes up all the time. Uh, particular lab matchup, right? Like that's a matchup you need two for. Um, I had a lot of, I played a lot of Gash Jira this weekend, and a lot of people went Unicorn Effect to Vanish, and they vanished one of these, and like that really sucks for you, like if you only play one. Uh, then I played this, and I played this, and this never came up, and this came up once. Uh, okay, like, and I played this, and this comes up a lot. Uh, if you make, like, turn one, I want to make, like, IP Skull Guardian low and stuff with, like, Trap in back row. It's, like, very hard for most decks to break that board, even with breakers. Um, so, yeah, like, this card, like, comes up quite a lot. Um, it's just really, really good. Yeah. Uh, also, like, when that happens, if they go Lightning Storm, something that did come up earlier was I, like, they went Lightning Storm, and I went Chain IP, and I fused with my Skull Guardian, and I summoned a Dynamondo, yeah. and the Dynamondo can't be destroyed by card effects, and on res I went like, effect and summoned back the Skull Guardian, yeah. um, which was pretty cool. Uh, then SP, obviously, like this card comes up a lot, particularly going second, you make this, well you make this, you make this, then you make this out of this, yeah. uh, clear a load of cards. Then I play Goddess, because this deck struggles sometimes with outing, like, like the last monster or like unoutable monsters, right? So you have the space, you might as well play it. Uh, and then I played my three low, well, my three Divine Ascends, and I played my two Instant Fusion cards, and then I played these two cards. Um, and I played these two because there are three Ultimate Slayer in my side deck. <laughs> um, yeah, so the idea is that versus Snake, they end on an Apo, this deck falls to Apo, uh, and you go Ultimate Slayer, you send this. Close the app home uh, through a Hope Harbinger, and then you put the you put this in grave, uh, and they have to IP you. So they have to go Flam Effect, and they have to summon IP here, and then they have to use IP, and they have to make SP and banish this because if they don't, uh, you just go like on res, you just go Effect, banish this for cost, and then they can't do anything because this doesn't target. So you yeah. just send the, the the twin, and you just like send the IP, and it costs them two interruptions. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty good. And then this is because there are occasions where maybe you want to like... Uh, I could imagine scenarios basically where you go Slayer and you need to out Hope Harbinger to play instead and you send okay. this to like clear the Hope and then you use this and like force an Apo Negate and stuff. Yep. Um, so that's my extra deck. And then I sided uh, some actual hand traps because I need them somewhere. So uh, three Ash. Uh, you need to play this card somewhere because Branded is a matchup, uh, like stuff like Lab is a matchup, um, all sorts of random decks are like matchups. It's like good into Tempai as well, right? Like, uh, I really wanted this card somewhere in my list. Uh, this came in a lot, like, 
uh, this came in versus Melodia to verse like Voiceless Voice. This came in versus like Kashira. Like, yeah, like this card's uh, really, really performed this weekend, and I'm really glad I played this. Yeah. Um, not main though. Uh, <laughs> and then I played three Phantasmi. So the idea here, right, is that whenever you can Phantasmi Snake Eye it's too late for you to draw hand traps that are meaningful and impactful but it's not too late for you to draw a dart ruler so the, <laughs> wow. the card okay. sort of comes up quite a lot uh, often though like if you've opened dart ruler or droplet what you can do with this is hold this and then when they go like uh flam effect to like summon back the ip that triggers this because it doesn't say link summon it's a special summon of a link monster or when they go prom effect and then you can like special this card and then very often in those scenarios, you draw like four cards and put back three. And then also this protects you from Princess. Um, like more so than like, well, in addition to Serave, it's protecting you from Princess, right? So like, uh, this card's just very, very good. It's also a seven. Um, and that means you contribute it for Ritual Summons as well. Like, yeah, the card was just like really, really solid uh, sure. all weekend. Yeah. Uh, no complaints. Uh, and then, yeah, the aforementioned Ultimate Slayer package. Yeah. So versus Snake Eye. Uh, these were coming in sort of every time going second because uh, the aim is again right you can phantasme you can draw into this and then this beats apo so you clear the apo you have this on board um, then it like forces the sp vanish of like uh, the guy in grave right and then you have phantasme which protects you from the sp on field vanish or the promethean engrave so now you just have like if they have full board like you have to play through like a hope harbinger basically like okay yeah that's fine. Um, and also, like, the other advantage of this card with this as well is, like, when you put in, like, this, then you end up with, like, quite a lot of bricks in your deck, right? Because you can draw, like, the trap, you have, like, a tree ass that sometimes you don't want in your hand, um, you have, like, prayers that you draw into, yeah. and then this card becomes really, really good because it starts putting stuff like this back in your deck, yeah. and so all of a sudden you actually end up with a hand of broken cards and not a hand of bricks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, that really helps also helps that these cards can send the same stuff as diviner so in like fusion matchups for example like you can send this um or like you can send this in like synchro matchups as well yeah. uh, and then i played my two cosmics because i really wanted three these came in a lot uh they just deal with like random back row they dealt with cashier birth a lot this weekend um yeah like cards sure. just really really solid it's just you know it's a decent card right yeah. and then last but not least i played three of this <laughs> this card's amazing. Um, every time I saw this, I won. Um, yeah, I, this deck already puts up an Omni Negate, and like deck struggle to beat like your Omni Negate, and they really struggle to beat your Omni Negate when they like activate droplets and they send two cards and you flip a judgment and then they are down three cards, right? Um, it's just so helpful, like because it means that like they can't like talent your Omni Negate and stuff like that, so that like, you get to keep this card. You get to like keep the like an Omni. You can get to use your Omni when you want to use your Omni um, and then like use this to stop whatever else that they're going to do, right? Um, so yeah, no. List was fine. Can't really <laughs> fine. complain. Uh, I'm washed, Joe. And, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but apparently most other people are more washed than me. So like, yeah. You got any shout outs you want to make? Shout oh yes. So shout out um, everybody at every locals I've ever been to. Um, which is a lot of people. Um, shout out to everybody who lent me cards. So that would be um, Joe, Ryan, Jamie, Kia, um, Danny. Danny lent me cards. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, everybody who lent me cards. If I've forgotten you, I'm really sorry. Um, thank you all so, so much. Um, thank you so much to Angus for driving me down. Uh, Callum, Aaron, and other Callum for being in the car and sort of putting up with me. And shout outs to Connor and Jamie for letting me sleep on their floor. Um, that's been really nice. Uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you very much. Thanks for the content. Catch no you later. Worries. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. <laughs>